Hello friends, some of you are wondering about the Ice Gauntlet and Void Gauntlet build. Just wanted to make this video to, to shed light on that really. Show you how it all works, some of the theories I have behind it. Some of the combo synergies that these two weapons have together. I think they're insane and I think this is probably the most slept on build in the game really. Some people have started to notice it. I've seen a few in the outpost rush now run around with it. But everything is still very great axe and Warhammer heavy. Uh, right, so we are running heavy armor. I know a lot of mages like to run medium and light, but I think heavy armor has the most insane sustain in the game when you play it right. I just wanted to show this as well to start. When I'm running medium armor, I can usually get up to around 1500, 1600 armor, physical. And if you're running light, you're getting even less. If you run 200 con in your attributes, which right now I'm not, I'm gonna show you what it looks like in a second, you'll see how much physical armor we actually gain from that breakpoint. So I'll throw this one extra point in. We get this here, 20% increase to armor. And we go from what we had just before all the way to 2350. That is an insane increase. That is about sometimes half of what an entire light armor uses. Armor is, it adds a lot to our sustain. And uh, on the topic of sustain, I'll show you some of the things we have in our gear. So, on every piece, in PvP at least, you want resilient. We've got it on our helm, we've got it on our chest, we have it on our gloves, we don't have it on our pants, I'm still trying to get that, and we have it on our boots. Reduces all the damage from crits, and when you turn your back, everyone's critting into you. So, sometimes if you're running all resilient and you have this other breakpoint here, which is another 10% crit damage reduced, you can take less damage from being hit in the back than you would being hit in the front. Insane. Uh, the other perks we have, Unending Thor. This is for the Ice Gauntlet. It makes it so frost effects remain on enemies for two seconds after exiting our ice storm. Which is this ability here. This ability here. So they'll be slowed in this. And the second they leave, normally, there's no more slow on them. But if we have that perk for the next two seconds, they're still slowed and affected by it. And that also means that they're affected by the synergies that Ice Gauntlet has when people are affected by frost effects. So, this perk here, crit damage increased when, uh, oh, no, wrong one. This one here, critical frost. When you're in a frosted area, if you hit someone, you've got a 15% increased crit chance, which is massive. And the other part is this. If you heavy attack someone while they've got the effects on them, you've got a chance to root them. Well, not a chance, it's a 100% guarantee. The chances is uh, if you miss or not, really, if you hit your shot. But we've got that one second route. I'm actually going to show the other breakpoint we have, which is in intelligence. The most important ones we have here would be the 10 mana after a dodge, but I think most people can hit this breakpoint. That's just a 200-200. The one you need to reach, even if you've got lower gear, is the 30% duration to damage over time spells. Half of our build gets affected by this. And those abilities would be the Ice Storm, the Dot from Disintegrate, that there, and Air Empower. All three, 30% buff. Very effective. We need to have that. The other perks we have on our gear are the Putrefying Scream. This ability is getting nerfed because it is way too strong uh, if you've ever played WoW it's pretty much a mortal strike but it's got like 100% uptime and uh, 
the other one we have is the nullifying oblivion. Now, if you're looking at this item, please don't look at the strength on it. I'm very ashamed of it, but I needed these perks. They're all highly synergistic with our build. The keen and keenly jagged, they're very strong together on the void gauntlet specifically because it sets up for our burst on our ice gauntlet. And the other important one is to have nullifying oblivion. I would have liked it on one of my armor pieces, but if I can't have it with resilient as well, it's best to just put it on the weapon for Void Gauntlet specifically. And when you cast your Oblivion, it takes every single buff off of them. On activation, Oblivion removes the limited duration buffs from enemies in its radius. So if someone has... well, it was bugged initially, so if they had food buff, it would even strip their food buff permanently. But when they're in this, no Fortify, so they lose that 10% damage reduction if they've got it. They lose their regeneration, any effects over time. It even removes their damage dealing ones, like in power. So you're taking less damage when you're fighting in this. And in addition to that, when you're in this, it gives you a massive stamina increase. See it ticking up? It lets you dodge over and over and over in the middle of combat. Very powerful, very good for sustain. On the rest of our gear, on our jewelry, health on your neck is probably the best one you could ever have. Thrust is good. Uh, it protects you from muskets, rapiers, spears, bows, lots of things that people like to run in outpost rush. It's a very nice neck, but I would prefer to have divine on it to increase the amount of heals I'm doing to myself, which as we get further into the build, you'll see it's quite a lot. On the ring, we've got Hardy and Keen Awareness. I think these two perks are the best ones to have in the game by a large amount. Hardy increases your stamina total, which allows you to have a third dodge in heavy armor, as well as full light. And Keen Awareness, massive damage increase, crit chance, nothing even comes close to it on rings. For our earring, this is... a uh, where a lot of our sustain comes from as well. The regenerating perk there, half a percent health every second, it is stronger than your food buff. So it's pretty much having two food buffs, constantly giving you health back. Very good for sustain. And the refreshing toast, reducing the cooldown on your potions even faster. In this build, you are constantly drinking potions. You are guzzling them. You are a very thirsty person. Really good stats for the earring. Not the best amount of constitution because it's a 500 item level ring, but it is free. You don't have to buy this off the trading post if you want to farm for it. You can get it up here. Teleport to this outpost. Zoom all the way down here. Go into this cave right here and uh, beat up the guy inside at the end for his lunch money over and over and over until he drops it. You wanted to drop this. This is by far the best snack he has in his lunchbox. Took me around 100 kills, I think. Will probably take you less. Uh, the other items in the build. The ice gauntlet. We're running keen and vicious here. I do have one that I tested with enchanted. I favored enchanted a lot until I started running this build specifically because I was using my my light and heavy attacks a lot more when I was running with a fire staff. But I'm not doing that now, and I'm using ability spam. So I don't even have room to get off lights and heavies usually. I get off one after the ice spike, but that's about it. And one if I'm trying to get a heavy in this storm. So I favor vicious now. At least until next patch, where they're changing how Critical Strike works, where it's going from multiplicative to additive. At that point, I think I might be going for Keenly Empowered instead of Vicious. Uh, we've covered this already, but to clarify how the synergy works with uh, Keen and Keenly Jagged, and how it buffs your eye score that pretty much when you're trying to go in for a kill, you have an insanely high crit chance in this build with your Void Gauntlet. 
instant crit. To have that bleed ticking, 66 damage over and over while you're bursting someone, very, very, very powerful. It just adds to the burst. It's around 500, 600 damage going off for free when you're trying to kill someone off with the Ice Gauntlet. So, let's have a look at all of our talents for the actual weapons themselves. We're taking everything for the Ice Spike and the Ice Gauntlet. We get the CDR if the Mighty Spike hits, which is the early detonation on this, or late detonation if you leave it, that large pillar there, if that hits, 10% CDR. And you'll come to notice that with this Ice Gauntlet build, CDR is very good. It is king. We've also taken Cold Reach. This is not used as much, but we take it because we've got a spare point. Energize critical, crit damage when stamina is full. Very powerful. Uh, going back to the Ice Spike. When we are happening to get a spike when someone's low, it's already hitting for half their health bar, but if they're already in an execute range, it's going to kill them. 20% damage on the mighty spike. They get hit by the path damage. They get hit by the two pylons that shoot out from this point here. At the end of the tree in the ice spike. Two shots come out, blast everyone. But if you time it perfectly and detonate it inside their character, these two shots will hit the, the impact point where the mighty spike is. And in addition to that, the path damage. This trail here. When you have this perk, that path is a stagger. So you can also hit someone with all parts of the ice spike damage. You can hit them with the path damage, the mighty spike, and the two shots that shoot off in each direction. So that, those two, that main one, they can all hit one person here if you detonate it early. Try and get an example here. So it showed two there, not the path actually hitting, but the two shots that shot out impacted, the mighty spike impacted. Try to get it again. No, I just missed again, but it can. It can do the stagger path as well. So your ice spike will stagger them, hit them four times, and you will constantly be hitting them with a light attack if you're spamming to detonate it early. So it's five hits. It's pretty much a one shot if you've got someone set up in a slow like this. They're rooted, you ice spike, oh, that missed. But, core concept is there. You'll also come to find that ice spike is very buggy. They'll be missing for no reason sometimes. Sometimes they'll perfectly hit and one shot someone. The rest of the talents in the ice gauntlet. Heavy freeze, we covered that earlier with the root. Critical frost, we covered that. Ultimate chill. This is just buffing the hell out of your ice damage. And this also affects your Void Gauntlet if you're running a Frost Gen. So you'll notice here, if I drop this, have a look at the Void damage real quick. On that side there, 1100, the other side 900. The one on the right side was the Frost damage. So that's why we're gemming Frost. The rest of the ice talents, we've got our storm, we take everything in this, it's just so valuable. If you cast at 100% mana, it only costs 5 mana, normally a lot more, good for efficiency. And then the more people in it, the more damage it does. The other points we take, this here, blocking stamina, I'll have to include a clip of this being shown. I was playing with Quick, quick Frost before where we had 10% move speed. I'm starting to favor this now. You can have infinite stamina when multiple melee guys are training into you and very good for sustain. As I was saying before, this whole build is built around sustain. The other points we take in the Ice Gauntlet are Ice Shower. We've got this one here, slows and roots, and we increase the duration to seven seconds to hold people back. You can buy yourself a lot of time if you burn all your abilities. And the only thing you've got left 
is your ice shower and you need to buy, if you look there on the right, 10 seconds, 8 seconds, 5 seconds, you can buy all of that time by kiting around your ice shower. And if someone does walk into it, you can hit them with the heavy as soon as they do. That'll root them. And then you can ice spike them again for free. That can lead to a kill and it's very good for baiting. So, the other things we've got... Uh, this here. This leads to all the CDR we have in our Ice Gauntlet build. Every time we cast a spell in a frosted area, and it doesn't even have to be your frosted area, someone else could put down an Ice Storm, your abilities get reduced by 20%. This is very strong. Very important to the build when you're brawling close range. The other point is in Defiant Freeze. Every time you cast an ability, which... If you're favoring your Ice Gauntlet, is all the time, you get a 20% fortify for two seconds. So, an example of all of the CDR we are getting. Have a look at the cooldowns on the right there. Our Ice Shower and our Ice Spike and our Ice Storm. We have fortified during all of this. 19 seconds, down to 13, down to 7. Very strong. Lots of fortify, lots of damage reduction. Now, Void Gauntlet. This is what is setting up all of our kills, doing all of our rot damage, and allowing our Ice Gauntlet to really shine. One of the reasons it makes the Void Gauntlet shine is the Oblivion. This ability, when you drop it, it drops an Empower for you and your friends as well, so anyone standing in this, and it also weakens the enemies. They'll be doing 15% less damage to you, They'll have their damage boons removed. And you'll be able to dodge like a madman over and over and over if you have to. Very strong. We are also taking crit chance when we're above 50%. We're taking CDR on crits. We're critting a lot because we're running so much crit. And when all of our stuff is on cooldown, which we always set up with the ice, the void gauntlet... Uh, we gain that 10% extra. I'm not sure if that trades over to Ice Gauntlet, but still very strong. I think that's worth taking. Empowering proximity. When we're casting abilities very close to people, we're gaining these empowers. Uh, we get a lot of value from this. We're brawling very close to people, just outside of melee range usually. So, as you can see here, that's the empower. It stacks. 20% now it uh, they st it stacks but they are on individual durations so you can run out of them you have to drop all three very fast to get 30% and they work in conjunction with the 20% from this ability here so 50% in power on your void gauntlet not something to scoff at the other point we've got here is on critical, which is all the time. We're gaining health for 15% of the damage we do. This helps our sustain. We're constantly looking for sustain in our builds. Some CDR on whenever we hit people afflicted by debuffs. In big brawls, everyone's usually covered in debuffs, so we're getting cooldown reduction from that. And then you can swap Void Caller out for this ability here. 10% damage when you're below 50% mana, which is quite often. However, in Outpost Rush, you do sometimes get into the main brawl. Well, not sometimes, you do, a lot. And this ability, when you get six stacks, you consume them all, and you get a three meter aura around you that heals you, so good for sustain, and damages enemies inside that. Scales with focus, so it's not that strong, because we're favoring int, but still something, still worth taking. You can see these stacks here these stacks right here. Once you get that to six, it pops, you start doing a little circle like that there around you, and it follows you around. It is worth taking, I think. But you can, if you were only doing 1v1s, take this instead. In a pure 1v1, this will have more value. But we're not usually at 50% mana or not staying there for very long because we're constantly drinking mana potions. Like I said before, we're very thirsty. The rest of the talents. 
I'm taking everything in this, everything in Putrefying Scream. This ability is disgustingly overpowered. Does a lot of damage. It is a stagger when you cast it, so if they're in the middle of casting one of their abilities and they don't have grit, they will now stop casting that and become rooted instead. If they're low health, the root is three seconds long, which is a death sentence for most people. And every person you hit, up to three, with this scream, will give you another 10% fortify. So you can get 30% fortify from one scream. If you hit a pack of people, you'll get three stacks of this. 30% damage reduction in heavy armor, all the sustain, very tanky. On the other side, we take everything in Orb. Orb is very strong as well. It does 100% damage for every time the Orb hits. And since we are taking this here, detonating Orb, we can hit twice with the Orb every time it's off cooldown. And when you hit with this Orb, it also applies a Disintegration, which is pretty much a Keenly Jagged Blade and it is a rend as well so it will increase the damage they're taking by 10 percent it'll hit twice like that bleed them a whole bunch with keenly jagged on the weapon and it'll also set up for your bomb when you go frost rends are very powerful and they can all be stacked as well the other thing we take here is, since we are always using our Void Gauntlet to open with, we have a 25% cost reduction on our spells when our mana is above 50%. So we're getting a lot of value from this. If we didn't have this, we would have to be dodging and drinking in our combo to have enough mana to cast everything. With this talent, we don't have to worry about that. And the other perk we take in this tree is the heal when you dodge. So, when you drink your mana potions, if you're low health, you'll go straight back to full mana when you drink that potion. And if you dodge, you will gain a heal for about four to 500. It scales with focus, so again, it's not that good with int, but 500 heal, very nice to have on a 20 second cooldown just from dodging, automatically going into your character. Lots of sources of regen, lots of heals, lots of sustain, damage reduction, roots, Burst. This <laughs> I can't get over how strong this build is. It is disgustingly strong against all the people running great axes and warhammers. We have so much physical armor that they can't actually damage us very well. And we can burst them and crush them and root them and CC them at the same time. So you can take on two, three great axes, which is usually the packs they come in. They all like to run together. CC them and burst them all because all of our abilities are cleave. Consumes as well. Uh, you want to make use of these a lot. These are so cheap on almost every server. 5% weapon damage for... It's only like 8 gold I think on our trading post for one of these. It lasts for 30 minutes. It's ridiculously strong for that. You should always be applying these when you're fighting in PvP. And yeah, we've got food. You want to run this as well? I have to run this to get past my breakpoint here for the 30% duration. Again, this is only 10 gold on our trading post. So 18 gold for a 30 minute buff. You should always have it. No reason not to. You should be doing everything you can to be as strong as you can. The other consume you can have on your bar, I like to use this. Elemental damage reduction by 25% for 20 seconds until 12 instances hit you. You can pre-pop this, yeah, fire. These are like 20 cents, by the way, on the trading post. And now for the next 20 seconds while you're dueling some other mage, you're taking 25% less damage from them. It is... It's very strong. You should be using it. It's also why it has a two minute cooldown. Uh, they understand how strong this is. Other parts of the builds. What haven't we covered? Combos. Openers. So, when people see you coming with this build, 
they know that they want to dodge your abilities. They want to get out of dodge. And uh, the second they can, they're usually a little bit safer. Because no one wants to stand in this. No one wants to stand in this. And no one likes being forced to stand still. You feel very vulnerable in a route like that. You feel very vulnerable in a route like this. And the route from the heavy attack. There is a lot of routes. And most people will be spamming their dodge bar the second they get put into one of those. So, if the person is not paying attention, ideal, in an ideal world, we get to walk up to them, empower... Oh, hold on. Drink my potion. Let's do this again in 10 seconds. Make sure we have full mana when we do this combo. In an ideal world, we get to do a combo like this in a moment. Where we gain from our empower, we gain from our frost field, and we get to use all of our roots. Someone's turned the other way, not paying attention to us, we get to empower behind them, drop our orb, detonate it on them, root them, drop an ice storm into a heavy, into an ice spike with an auto. That leaves our ice shower, which gives us even more room here. And you can see the CDR going into effect with Frost Bear. Constantly drinking mana potions. Reroot him. Very strong. A ridiculous amount of damage if someone's not paying attention to you. If they are paying attention to you and you need to skirmish before you can get into them, you can always open with Orb, detonate it on them, get closer, dodge whatever hammer stun they throw at you, usually a stagger, into a root. The second you land your root, you drop this, they are still rooted when you ice spike like this and they can't dodge, and that will land and that will crush them. And at that point, they'll be peeling and reeling, they don't want to take any more damage, they know they need to heal. If they do get away and heal, they'll come straight back at you. And at that point, you haven't used your ice shower yet, so when they lunge into you, you, you ice shower them into a heavy root, into a storm. And since your ice spike is such a low cooldown, you get to ice spike them again. And at that point as well, you drink a potion again, you start over. Your void gauntlet cooldowns have come back up. Very strong. I think this build is... Unreal. You can tank an insane amount of damage. You can dish out an, an insane amount of damage. And, yeah, I think that's about it. I think that is about it. I will throw some clips on top of them. Some commentary about why they're going the way they are. And, yeah, explain some of the highlights of, of why this build is so strong. I highly suggest you try this out. It's a lot of fun.